This video contains content that some might find disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Technology is a wonderful thing that provides connection in a fast world. A video chat between two people worlds apart, for example. But what if that connection is not one that you asked for? A connection to a person one step ahead with nefarious intentions. For our narrator, he finds himself in a game of cat and mouse where the roles are still to be decided. I'm Ryan Bergara, and this is the season finale of Are You Scared? A show where I tell my friend Shane Madey the internet's scariest stories that may or may not be true. Now, I have not read this story before, and neither has Shane. So lock your doors, turn off the lights, and let's see if we can make it until the end. The Phone Stalker. This happened on a warm Saturday evening when I was 14 years old. Everything I'm about to tell you is true. I've lived on the same corner in a small suburban town since I was young. It's a nice, normal community, barring an occasional scream or a gunshot ringing out in the night. I live with my mom, stepdad, and sister, but since she's nine years older than me, I have always felt like the only kid in the house. The age gap taught me self-reliance in terms of keeping myself occupied and entertained. I was also a nerdy little boy, not exactly into the party scene, so sneaking out was never a temptation. All that to say, my parents never worried about leaving me home alone, which is exactly why they felt comfortable leaving me alone on this particular night. I relate to this protagonist right from the jump, a nerdy little boy? I was a nerd, <laughs> were you a nerdy little boy? Well, you weren't a little boy, you were a nerdy boy. I was a little boy, I hit a growth spurt. You went from what? 6'1 to 7'4? Exactly right, yes. <laughs> How about being a homebody? Is that something you could relate to? Being home is my favorite thing. I prefer I know being is. home to most other things. It's where all your stuff is. What if that home became dangerous? Well, then that would be scary. <laughs> my sister was out of town, and my parents left for a party around 4.30 p.m. As soon as they got out of the driveway, I started blasting music through the Bluetooth speaker in the living room. I took a shower and put on some shorts and my favorite Friday the 13th hoodie, King of the Castle. I was living large. <laughs> the very definition of living large, taking a shower and putting on some shorts. And also blasting music in your living room like oh, no one's watching. Yeah. When my roommates leave, I'm doing crazy stuff all over. You know? What are you doing? What uh, crazy stuff are you doing? Oh, let me uh, guess. You're popping kernels. I'm popping kernels, that's right, yeah. <sighs> Naked. Sure. Um, yeah. Just watch I mean, that oil. Oh, I know, I have an oil protector. I have an oil cover on my popper, so. Love to hear that. Maybe making some bacon and eggs or something like that. Blasting film soundtracks as loud as I possibly can. I'm imagining you got the, the popcorn popper going over here. You're yeah. also making bacon and eggs for some reason. Buck-ass naked, the Dunkirk soundtrack, blasting! And I have like a cowboy kind of holster strap on, and each uh, holster is a white claw. Uh, 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 to clarify, that's the- But still naked. All right, yeah, yeah. hey, living large. I was walking downstairs to put on a movie when I heard a knock at the door. This was odd as I wasn't expecting anyone, and my family wouldn't be home for hours. I turned down my music and went to open the door. On the other side of the screen was a tall, lanky man with pale skin and streaky blonde hair. He had acne and looked to be only a couple years older than me. He was holding pizza and wings from the Domino's up the road. Whoa, hell yeah. You here to talk about Domino's? Well, I'm here to talk about pizza showing up at your door when you didn't even order it. A little unnerving to me if I'm home alone. Oh, then again, I tend to be on the more paranoid side, so I would think someone's trying to poison me. <laughs> order for Tessa, he said. My stomach tensed a bit. Tessa is my mom's name, but she wasn't home, and she doesn't like Domino's, so why would she order this? Maybe she realized there was nothing in the fridge and ordered me dinner? Either way, I said nothing and signed for the pizza. 
The pizza man handed over the goods and walked back down to his car at the end of the driveway. I turned to go inside, but then I stopped. I don't know how, but I could feel him looking at me. I looked over my shoulder and sure enough, he was just standing by his car door, staring at me, expressionless. I quickly turned around, closed the door and locked it behind me. This is actually something that's quite common, weirdly, that humans have almost kind of like this unconfirmed sixth sense. Have you ever felt like someone was watching you and then you look across the street and it's like, oh yeah, that SpongeBob character on Hollywood Boulevard is looking at me. No, but I've, you know, I also just sort of, I just sort of dance through life, you know? I'm not too worried about what other people are, if they're looking at me or not. I have the privilege of being a giant tall man, so I'm That's not true. too worried. If anything, I'm trying to make other people feel comfortable by moving away from them. Cause I look like the Slender Man coming down the street. I don't want to spook anybody. My phone started buzzing in my pocket. It was my boyfriend, Jason, who conveniently lived down the street from me. We had been dating for two years and he always called when I was alone to keep me company. This call was strange though, because he instantly asked, who was the man at your house? I froze, wondering how he could have known about the pizza delivery, but then realized it was not unlike him to go on walks past my house and send me pictures of my family outside on our patio or me when I take out the trash. He must have just seen him as he walked by. Hang on. Huh? I mean, I guess it's kind of like a cutesy, like, you know, hey, I saw you outside your house. I, you know, you live down the street, take a picture of them, be like, look, I see you. Kind of cutesy little games like that, you know? I don't, I don't know about that. Especially if you're dating. You've never seen Sarah sitting on the balcony taking a picture of her. And then when she no. sees the angle at which you're looking at her, she looks up and you're like sitting there waiting like with a funny face. I've done that to Mari before. You know what? Maybe I can excuse it because I did take a very funny photo of you once where you were very zoned in at work and you looked dead. <laughs> we talked for about five more minutes before I told Jason I wanted to go take a nap and hung up. I was standing in our kitchen next to a big sliding glass door that provided a convenient view from the backyard of the whole downstairs portion of the house. The sun had set and the darkness started to press in on the glass. My stomach turned and once again, I had the weird sense that I was being watched. People who watch this show already know I have a fear of something watching me through the windows. And if you have like a big glass door like this that kind of gives a person like a command center view of your entire house, not a good situation to be in, especially if you think there's someone creeping around. Yeah, I'll say to my parents' credit, growing up, my dad put cameras up all around the outside of our house. So in our family room, we had like our main television where we would watch movies and stuff. And then directly next to it was a smaller monitor that showed us every single angle of oh, the shit. outside of our house at all times. Man, your dad built you panic room. To distract myself, I went into the living room and put on a scary movie. Counterintuitive, I know, but I liked watching horror movies, so this was normal for me. About an hour into the film, I heard a shuffling noise on the patio. My eyes darted to the sliding glass door. I wanted to get out of view from it, but somehow the idea of taking my eyes off of it seemed even scarier. I held still for a bit to listen for more movement but when nothing happened, tried to focus on the movie again. About 10 minutes later, I heard it again. This time, I thought I heard footsteps too. I got up, slowly. Reluctantly, I walked over to the big glass door and flipped the switch to the patio, flooding the backyard with light. Nothing. I was satisfied that there was nothing out there, but as I flipped the light off again, the darkness felt like it was pressing even closer. I walked back to the living room, feeling exposed as I turned my back to the glass door. About five minutes later, my phone received an airdrop from someone named Lover. I assumed it was Jason being an idiot, but when I opened it, it was a picture of me. A real-time picture of me, standing in front of the big glass door in our kitchen, looking out into our yard. Where's Jason? <laughs> Fair question, where's Jason? What do you, Where oh, you is mean, his like, ass? Why is he not there with him to, to yes! protect his boyfriend? What's Jason doing? I'll tell you what he's not doing, stopping his boyfriend from being murdered. Yeah, sounds like it. 
I nearly boiled over in anger. Jason knew I got scared easily, so creeping around outside to spook me was downright mean. I called him immediately, but he didn't pick up. I texted him, you're such a dork, go home babe or come inside, and gripped my phone tightly, waiting for some response back. I waited for a couple minutes and my phone finally buzzed. It was Jason, and it was a snap of him getting out of the shower. My stomach dropped. I called Jason in a panic. Someone airdropped me a picture of me looking out the patio door, I told him, now fully panicking. It was only taken like 10 minutes ago. If it wasn't you, who was it? He laughed at me. I could hear his voice echoing in his bathroom. Baby, it's probably just a prank. Could be just Sarah who saw you, he said. Sarah lives in the house behind ours and could see into our backyard from her room. We'd chatted across yards before, but this still felt a bit odd for her to do. Still, that felt like the only reasonable explanation. That's not a neighborly thing to do. Neighbors should be saying, hey, I can see your home alone. Don't worry, I can see your backyard quite clear from here and it looks good. I talked to Jason for a bit longer to settle my nerves and calmed down. I went back to the couch and was able to watch the remainder of my movie without interruption. I started to relax and turned on some reality TV to zone out before I went up to bed. Just as I felt my eyes starting to close, my phone buzzed again. It was another photo from Lover. This time, the photo was taken from the patio itself, looking in through the big glass door. I could see myself distantly sitting, looking at the TV in the living room. I felt a prickling up the base of my spine, and all my hair stood on end. Hoping that Jason was right and that this was some kind of sick joke, I sent back a photo of myself holding up my middle finger with the caption, nice try Sarah. As soon as I sent it, I realized something that made my blood curdle. Sarah doesn't have an iPhone. Uh -huh. Ba -ba -ba. She has an Android. This is why I would have a scarecrow in my backyard because what I would do is I would walk outside into the backyard, stare directly into the direction of this person for a good minute or two, just like this. Yeah, yeah. And then I would unsheath my katana. Oh, you got that katana. And in the same motion, dismember the head of that scarecrow. It would be so clean. It's like one of the things where the head gets cut off, but it like doesn't even fall off immediately. It's like. Yeah, this guy's out there in the bush being like, that wasn't scary. It just made the head move a little bit. And the head's like, Shukakong. Exactly. Oh, I better go. Not only do what? I scare this guy into leaving my yard, but now my plants are fertilized because he's probably pooing himself, realizing That's he's dealing right. with a fucking samurai, baby. <laughs> You're going to have some juicy tomatoes come harvesting time, I'll tell you that. Before I could completely comprehend what was happening, another photo came through. This time, it was just a photo of a knife with the caption, no cops. I froze. I felt my face flush with panic. Someone was coming after me. I felt like I was in a horror film. Without losing another moment, I ran to the kitchen and closed the blinds and sprinted around the bottom floor, checking every single lock I could get to. My phone buzzed again. It was a close-up of my face through the kitchen window. I screamed and dropped my phone. My heart was racing. I was covered in sweat and uncontrollably shaking. I grabbed a large knife from our knife block next to the stove and picked up my phone. The only thing I could think to do was protect myself. I screamed again loudly, hoping a neighbor would hear and ran upstairs to my bathroom, locking myself inside. I sat down in the dark and started to sob uncontrollably. I struggled to catch my breath without making any noise. I texted Jason what was happening and sent him the pictures. He called me. I answered, trying to stay as quiet as I could. Jason, help me, I'm scared, I whispered. Stay where you are, I'm getting help. He was breathing heavily. During the call, I received another photo. I accepted it with tears streaming down my face. It was a silhouette of a person clothed in black, holding a brick in an outstretched hand. They were standing on my patio. I shrieked and dropped my phone. I could hear Jason still trying to ask what had happened. They were coming for me. I heard an explosive shattering of glass. I had run out of time. First off, 
this killer must have watched the film Scream because this sounds like Scream. I was going like to say it's, it's quite Scream-like. The airdrop is sort of the modern day spooky phone call in a way. It is kind of, I mean, yeah. If Ghostface were operating now, yes, this he is would what be airdropping. He'd do. You know that guy would be texting. The first picture that gets sent of my significant other by someone that's not me, I'm driving down there, especially if I live down the block from this person. Yeah. Not to shit on Jason here, but I'm just saying that's what I would do. And guess what's going to be in its holster? A fucking katana. Because that's what's going to happen. Until it's out of its holster, you know what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Because, baby, that metal is thirsty. And sometimes I got to quench it, okay? Oh, you got to quench it. Whoever this was, they were now inside the house. My head started spinning as I started to feel my reality sinking in. I was going to die. I never got to live the life I wanted, get married, have kids. Hell, I never even got my license. I silenced my phone, trying to stay as quiet as possible by slowing my breathing. The final photo appeared, and there he was, the pizza man, standing in my dining room, holding a knife in his hand, smiling. My face went numb. I heard the wood creak from his steps downstairs. Frantically, I stood up and opened the blinds of the bathroom window, hoping to see someone on the street. Nobody. I thought about trying to climb through the window, but there would be nothing to break my fall but the hard driveway one story below. My racing mind was snapped back to reality by the sound of wood creaking loudly as the pizza man climbed up the stairs. <laughs> I got it's not very scary to say, as the pizza man climbed the yeah, stairs. Yeah, I know. Like, if, if I had, like, a creepy call and I was like, who, what's your name? Why are you doing this? And he goes, I'm the pizza man. <laughs> I'd be like, cool. I know you're about to murder me. Can we workshop this a little bit? I don't want it in the papers that I got killed by the pizza man. Full admission here. I forgot about the pizza man. When you me said too. it was the pizza man, I was like, oh, yeah, that guy. The guy from the first act. Every single time. I picked up the knife I had and aimed it towards the door. Each step he took sent chills through my body as I tried to brace myself, trying not to collapse. I was both numb and raw, adrenaline masking everything but his heavy plodding steps. I heard him reach the landing at the top of the stairs. I felt myself backing away from the door as far as I could, pressing into the tub. And then it was silent. I couldn't hear his movement. I couldn't hear any movement. Suddenly, the doorknob started to slowly turn. It halted against the lock. I waited. He waited. A long moment of silence. My heart pounded in my ears. I screamed, go away, leave me alone. He started to laugh, low and rough. He sounded nothing like the gawky boy from before. <laughs> Okay. I guess I was imagining like a... Ho, 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 ho. You sound you know? like Alan Rickman in Die Hard. <laughs> now I have oh. a machine gun. Ho, 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 ho. ho. What if this guy just laughed like Seth Rogen outside there? <laughs> <laughs> with no alternative, I went for the window, trying to break it with the knife I held, but accidentally sliced my arm. I gasped in pain. I looked over and saw the knob turning again, and the door straining against its frame as he pushed against it, trying to get in. Acting purely on instinct, I dropped to the floor and peered under the door. His foot braced him as he pressed into the door, cursing at the knob. It's always funny to imagine being like, this fucking thing sucks. <laughs> I'm trying to murder! I grabbed my knife and stabbed with all my strength into the side of his boot. I heard him shriek in surprise and stumble back from the door. I seized my chance. I jumped up, unlocked the door, and ran as fast as I could. He swung at me, his knife slicing into my hand that protected my head as I sprinted. I could feel the pain spreading up my arm, but didn't look up. I leapt down the stairs, ran barefoot through the broken glass, out into the yard. I threw open the fence and ran out to the street. Holy shit. That's a lot. We got a little Annie Lennox situation over here. A little 
stab in there. That's fun. Yeah. Love a little stab. It's a tough day at the office for this murderer. Yeah. Thwarted by a, a common bathroom doorknob and then got stabbed right in the side of a foot. I like that he just apparently didn't plan for there to be doors in this house. <laughs> Are you not like a bean family here? <laughs> I was expecting beans. <laughs> I'm also imagining a knife going into the side of a boot. That seems like a bad stab. Not that there's a good stab out there. There's not a place on my body where I'm like, yeah, stab me, oh, there, yeah, please. Yeah. Stab me, daddy, you know, I don't want that. Um, I'm imagining a knife going directly into the side of my foot. I want up, you know what's even worse? The knife going into the boot, but at an angle so that it slices the back of your Achilles. <laughs> and now you're just like, ah! <laughs> yeah. oh! Or now I'm also imagining it going directly, like, into the toes, like straight into the toes. Oh, and oh. That's also bad. This guy said, I heard him shriek in surprise. I wonder what he shrieked. Do you think he was like, oh shit. Why would you do that? <laughs> Zoinks. Me supposed to stab, not oh. you. When I got there, two cops pulled up with Jason and his dad. I started screaming for help and collapsed to my knees. Jason's dad scooped me up and the two cops ran around the back. He put me in their car with Jason, and we waited for an ambulance with some neighbors who wrapped cloth around my feet and hands. Minutes later, the two cops emerged with the handcuffed pizza guy, his right leg limping and bleeding. He stared at me as they brought him to the squad car and put him in. I felt his cold eyes more than I could feel my own pain. The ambulance arrived, and they started treating my cuts. And finally, I felt myself fully let go and sob. My parents arrived a few minutes later, and I've never seen my stepdad cry so much. He was this big, tough, macho man, so seeing him break down, I knew how scared he was for me. They ran over to the ambulance and hugged me tightly. They sat in shock as I told them everything that happened. They blamed themselves, but I never did. As for the pizza man, according to the police, he was a child predator who used his job to find victims at home alone. They grabbed him going through my closet upstairs after I'd run out. We watched the cops drive him away. And all the while, he never broke his gaze at me. So, are you scared? In the end, Jason did what he was supposed to do. He went and got help. Jason, you are back in my good graces. In fact, an apology is in order. I am sorry. I apologize to you, Jason. Let's find out now if this is a true story. Phone Stalker was submitted to us for this show by Julian Hernandez and is an experienced story. So this is a no! true story. No! Holy shit. Very horrifying that this is true. Really sorry to the narrator. That fucking sucks. That certainly is a hell of a way to end this season. Holy shit. There's some crazy people out there, folks. Uh, make sure you lock in those doors. Thank you all for watching this season and uh, good night. Sleep tight.